Catherine de Viapiavi, whether a two man or cutter. Maggie Mahatay in the Kali got to my akinda, Maggie gained the my banking. You could have Catherine Nandi, Sujata Kurana, Kone Latino, Ape Matagi, Benkin Beer. That was mentioned by the lake, and that is my 19th feature film. Uh, it's been a long journey, but who knows, there may be lots of other films ahead. The storyline of mention? The storyline is uh, pretty simple in a way. It's about a widow, 55 years old, coming back with her teenage daughter from a self imposed exile in England to fight to retain her mansion. Lester James Peeries, the celebrated film director of Sri Lanka, has single-handedly created a national and international identity for Sri Lankan cinema. He was born in a traditional Catholic family on 5th April 1919 in Dehiwela, on the outskirts of Colombo. He now lives in Colombo. The gracious warmth and the quiet serenity of his house are as different from the bustle of modern Colombo as his creative concerns are distanced from the mainstream cinema. For more than 35 years now, he has explored in his cinema the theme of family as a microcosm and the way it reflects the changes in Sri Lankan society. Piri started his life as a writer on culture and literature with the Times of Ceylon. Frank Morais, the renowned Indian journalist, was then the editor of the Times of Ceylon. In 1946, Peary's went to London to check on his brother, Ivan, who was ailing. Frank Moraes commissioned him to write from London on cultural events and on cinema. While living in London, Peary's made his first short film, Soliloquy. Soliloquy dramatized the inner monologue of a young, poverty-stricken painter. It became quite a critical success, and Peary's went on to make two other short films in London. And when she appears, I'd like to do what I've always wanted to in my timeless life. In 1952, Lester James Peary's returned to Sri Lanka to join the government film unit to make documentary films. Peary's was a Christian, and his country was predominantly Buddhist. His six-year stay in London had made him an alien to his own land and to his own people. Four years of making documentaries for the government film unit became for Peary's a journey of rediscovery. How did this four years of making documentary films in Sri Lanka influence you personally and work-wise? Those four years were the most formative, most influential four years of my life because those are the years in which I came to know my people know the rural scene, getting closer and closer to the spirit and the heart of Sri Lanka. Peeris was now ready to make his first feature film in Sinhala language. Sinhala films were being made since 1946, but most of these were poor copies of South Indian song and dance romantic fantasies or mythologicals produced entirely within the studio confines. Peeries had no interest in this kind of cinema. He was determined to make an authentic Sinhala film that truly, but imaginatively, portrayed the life of his people. Entirely shot on rural locations with amateur actors, Rikawa, or the Line of Destiny, 
was completed against all odds in 1956. Rikawa was the story of a village boy who was supposed to possess the gift of healing. Rikawa combined realism with cinematic lyricism and broke all the rules of established cinema. It was hailed by the critics as the birth of Sinhala cinema and became the first Sri Lankan film to enter the competition at the Khan Film Festival. Rikawa did not win any award at Khan, but it did make an impact on renowned critics like Andre Bajin, Georges Sadur, and Lindsay Anderson. With Rikawa, Lester James Peary's had started charting his own line of destiny. By a happy coincidence, Rikawa also led to a lifelong friendship with Satyajit Ray. A year earlier, Satyajit Ray had finished his first film, Pathir Panchali, or Song of the Road. It had also participated in the Khan Film Festival. Occasionally, to deal with films, particularly when you're dealing with contemporary subjects, politics is so very much in the air that you can hardly leave out politics, either directly or indirectly, obliquely, the element of politics has to come into the film. But violence, is talking of violence, I, I'm actually much more interested in psychological violence than physical violence. There are two aspects of violence, actually. In fact, for instance, in my very first film, Pathe Panchali, I can two, mention two scenes. One of intense psychological violence, where Durga's mother, Shabuja, is so cruel by implication to the old woman, where she doesn't even offer her food while she herself is eating. And she wants shelter, wants to come back to her own little cottage, but she doesn't let her do so. And she walks away to her death. Mr. Superiors, how did your relationship with Satyajit Rai begin? Well, that's a very interesting uh, story. It started in a very fortuitous kind of way. Kopita Sarka, uh, the well-known Indian journalist, was here and got in touch with me and said, I have heard that you've made a film that I would like to see. Can you run the cutting copy, the, the copy for me? I said, the film is not finished. It's, in a cutting copy stage, uh, but uh, what is it about? So I said, really, it is about a, a village, about a family, about a boy, a girl. And uh, she said, it's very strange. Has it been shot entirely on location? I said, Ent absolutely entirely on location. So she said, it is very, very extraordinary. My friend, Satyajit Ray, has made a film exactly on the same lines, may not be the same story. Can you run the film for me? I said, well, it is very rough cutting copy stage, work print. No, 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 run it for me. I'd love to see it. So I ran it for her and she said, good Lord, how much it is like this film of, uh, of uh, my friends. Now you must, must write, start writing to him. And that started this wonderful, wonderful friendship on paper because it, it was on paper incredibly for a very long time. So I started the correspondence in 1957. I never met him till 1968. The letters that Ray wrote to Peary's largely dealt with his hopes and apprehensions as a filmmaker. According to Peary's, these were borrowed by Ray's biographer, Mari Seaton, and never returned. These are now with the British Film Institute, or the BFI. Several years later, Andrew Robinson, while revising his book on Ray, saw them at the BFI and sent copies of some of these to Peary's. In January 2001, Andrew Robinson sent a copy of his book to Peary's, on which he wrote, for Lester James Peary's, Ray's fellow director. 
to whom he opened his mind. In 1983, the International Film Guide selected Peeries as one of the five directors of the year. Reviewing the work of Peeries, Derek Ellie wrote, Rikawa is every bit as important a first film as Ray's Pathir Panchali. Miss Peeries, who are the Asian directors whom you really admire? Ah, oh, that's an easy one. Uh, no order of uh, preference, that would be invidious. I would say Satyajit Rai, because we were so close. Kurosawa, of course, because he, he is one of the big giants. Ozu, because he's very near my style, and almost a spiritual feeling you get from his, film, uh, from his films. And uh, in the contemporary context, I would say Adur, I think of him very highly for his structures and for his sheer intelligence of his uh, narrative. Do you admire Ray only because he was very close to you? No, 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 no. That would be absolutely incorrect. That would be practically libelous. Now, I thought, always think of Ray as the greatest humanist I think the cinema has ever known. Uh, he is a tapestry of Indian life so vast, the fresco, I would say, so vast, and the spontaneity of the playing is so incredible that I think from those two points of view, uh, there is nobody really, no, nobody to equal him. Rikawa was a critical success, but as an artist, Peeries was still groping. It was only eight years later, with Gamparelia, that he finally found his theme that was to become a magnificent obsession. Gamparelia, or Changing Village, was completed by Peeries in 1964. It was based on a celebrated novel by Martin Vikramasinghe, just as Ray's Pather Panchali was based on a literary classic by Bibhuti Bhushan Banerjee. Gamparelia depicts the changing family relationships in the backdrop of the declining landed aristocracy and the rising new business class. He was a rich man now. Pial, a poor educated young man, wants to marry Nanda. His proposal is turned down as he is not a social equal of Nanda's family. Several years later, Pial becomes prosperous. Nanda now marries him, but only after her first husband disappears and is given up for dead. Unfortunately, the dead body of the first husband arrives after they're already married. Gamparilia won the Golden Peacock for the best feature film and the Critics' Award at India's International Film Festival in 1965. Peeries could not come to New Delhi to receive the award. The festival jury, headed by Satyajit Ray, had some of the most eminent film personalities of the cinema world. It had Lindsay Anderson, it had Madame Kawakita, it had uh, the French histo film historian George Sadaul, then it had uh, Andre Vaida. It was a very, very distinguished jury under the chairmanship of Satyajit Ray. And uh, any award, you know, that you could get from that jury, it becomes a very, very important award. It completely changed my life. Uh, for instance, when I started with Ray Carver, between Ray Carver and Camperelia, there were 10 long years of waiting in the wilderness 
wondering what was going to happen. And then this miracle happened in Delhi. And when this golden peacock came to me, of course, I was liberated. I was free because I got three films in a row. Gamparelia changed the life of theories in another important way. This film was partly financed by Sumitra Gunavardhani, who had earlier worked with theories as the script continuity person on his second film, Sandesaya, or The Message. Sumitra had done a diploma in film technique from London and had edited Gamparelia. Immediately after the release of Gamparelia, Peeris married her in June 1964. Over the years, Sumitra emerged as a distinguished filmmaker in her own right. Later, she became the ambassador of her country to France from 1995 to 1999, and Peeris accompanied her to Paris. After they came back to Sri Lanka, both resumed their careers as filmmakers. Mansion by the Lake is the first film of Peary's after his return from France. Are you a deeply religious person? Uh, I would say that I am deeply religious in the sense that I am very tolerant of all religions. I am quite liberal. For instance, you take uh, Sumitra. She is a Buddhist and I am a Roman Catholic. Does that answer your question? मलगी प्राणकारिंगलाइन the sequel to Gamparilia, that is Kali Yugaya, or the time of Kali, came 18 years later in 1982. By this time, the lead actors of Gamparilia had become middle-aged. This was almost providential for Peeris, as the characters in Kali Yugaya had also aged. Vikram, this is where we shot Kali Yuga. Uh, I think way back in 1981. Kali Yugaya carries the story of Gamparilia family to the next generation. By now, the emotional bonds of the family have become subservient to money. The family is there, but only tenuously. Together with Yoganthaya, completed a year later, this trilogy is as important in the context of Lester James Peary's as the Appu trilogy is in the context of Satyajit Ray. <laughs> Hmm? 
मैंने मैं आई थी ना एक ही तो मार्च रे रुपया तून सी है तो क्या बने ये वात्ता टेन वाकी के घी लगा ला थी ना देवाल थामा मिस सुपीरियस हाउ डू यू सी द फैमिली रिलेशनशिप्स चेंजिंग फ्रॉम गैम्परेलिया टू कल्युग well in gamparelia the family as a unit is still very much intact though towards the final scenes you'll notice that there is a bit of a strain between husband and wife but it's not very serious in kaliyuga on the other hand to begin with you have the husband he has several uh, secret affairs and even the wife is caught out in a clandestine affair and what about yugantha well yugantha is as the title translates the end of an era uh, the very foundations of the family has have begun to disintegrate the husband has become a very very wealthy industrialist millionaire and um, he has this one son whom he sends off to england has a liberal education there london school of economics you know what happens and he comes back very heavily politicized and very much a socialist takes the the workers the burden of the workers on his shoulders and fights the father father thinks that he's going to be an investment but it's the other way about now this leads to a terrific uh, conflict between father and son and as a result of it the father gets isolated as is in the picture the son wins with the workers and you find that uh, in a way it is the most political film that i have made but of course it is based on a very political novel in between gamperelia kaliyogaya and yuganthaya Pires had made 11 other feature films. Most of these have traveled to different international film festivals and have won awards. Golu Hadwatha or Silence of the Heart received the Sidalk Diploma of Honor at Delhi International Film Festival of 1969. Nidhania or The Treasure won the Silver Lion at the Venice Film Festival in 1972. It was also selected as one of the outstanding films of the year at the London Film Festival. Bedegama or Village in the Jungle was again selected as an outstanding film by the London Film Festival in 1981. The same year it also participated in the prestigious Directors Fortnight section in the Cannes Film Festival as did Kaliyogaya 2 years later. In 1995 his film Sunset was shown at India's International Film Festival in the Cinema of the World section. Despite having made so many feature films, it is surprising that Peeris has never made a feature film with a Christian theme. According to Peeris, he has not done so because Christians constitute a very small minority of the people of Sri Lanka. While as a filmmaker, he wants to identify with all his people. and they are predominantly buddhist the people of sri lanka have always been the main source of inspiration and strength for lester james peeris but amongst the community of friends that he has acquired all over the world india does occupy a very special place apart from the formal honors that his films have received in india He was a member of the Indian Festival Jury in 1978 and several retrospectives of his films have been organized in India by major film societies. These include the Film Forum in Mumbai, the Chalchitra Film Society in Thiruvananthapuram and Cine Central in Kolkata. The Kolkata retrospective in 1990 was organized on the initiative of Satyajit Ray and was inaugurated by Mrinal Sen. You have had a long association with India. How do you look at this relationship? Uh I think it has been very close because my films have had more exposure in India 
than in any other country. I have had more uh, retrospectives in all the capital cities, Madras, Bombay, Calcutta, Trivandrum, and uh, therefore there has been a two-way thing, dialogue, between my work and the Indian spectators. I've been serving on the jury, I've been invited as a special guest more than once, and with all that, of course, India is in my system. It's almost a spiritual union. The spiritual relationship between Lester James Perry's and India culminated in the Lifetime Achievement Award that was given to Peary's at India's International Film Festival held in New Delhi in January 2000. That this long pilgrimage that I had made for 35 years from Gamperalia to this particular moment in time was a moment touched by grace. It is not only the crowning glory, but a kind of spiritual reawakening that a country that gave me an award 35 years ago gave me this mar marvelous Lifetime Achievement Award, which I suppose the e is the summation of a lifetime's work. The pilgrim's progress continues. So does his obsession with the theme of family as a mirror of the world. That is the world of Peris. And that is also the theme of his latest film, Mansion by the Lake, that he completed in April 2001, when he became 82 years old. Fifty years making films, it has been a long, long pilgrimage. Life and my people have been very good to me. I hope that through my films, I have given something back to them.